Can I tell you something? Lately, I'm tired of trying and trying, and angry that they left us here. The anger makes me even less inclined to solve their puzzle for them. Why do we do this? Yes, I'll spell this out. Not because you're stupid or naive. Also not saying that you're not. Please, I'm coming to you for guidance. Sorry, very sorry. I can't. Fact is, of course we're all aware of the evident futility of this big task. It's not said out loud, but if you were better at reading between the lines, there's nowhere you wouldn't see it. We're all frustrated. So why do we continue? We assemble the work groups, we ponder, we iterate and try. Some of us die. It's not fair. Because there's not any options. What else can we do? You're stuck in your can, and at any moment, we have no more than two alternatives. Do nothing, or work like we're supposed to. An analogy. You have a maze, and you have a handful of bugs. You put the bugs in the maze, and you leave. You have an infinite time, one of the bugs will find a way out. If they just erratically try and try. This is why they call us iterators. But we do die of old age. Even more incentive. You know that nothing tr ever truly dies, though. Around and around it goes. Granted, our tools and resources get worse over time, but that's theoretically unproblematic. Because, in time, even a minuscule chance will strike a positive. All the same to them. They're not around anymore. I struggle to accept being a bug. Welcome to the next episode of the Rain World Nature Documentary. In this episode, the Slug Catch will explore the Iterator Five Tunnels. As the Slug Cat moves through the smaller tunnels between the Unmarried and this region, it finds itself no longer bound by gravity. Every move it makes from here on out must be precise, otherwise it risks floating helplessly. Easy prey. The slug cat takes a couple of minutes to get used to this new form of movement. Floating into the next room. It comes at a crossways, but its instincts tell it to move up. And across a large tunnel. It finds itself in much larger than the previous ones. Narrowly crawls about the exterior of one structure for grabbing onto something. It briefly hops about before reaching a series of tunnels. Though it is unable to immediately reach them, so it maneuvers around several large poles in order to get them. And it is here that the slug cat hears something. It's the rod. They seem to have a presence here just as they did in. Five Pebbles' exterior. This isn't good. Among iterators, the rot is a very deadly thing. If it has time to fester, then it will almost certainly overtake Five Pebbles. The Slug Cat's ability to narrowly move around the rot is hindered due to the low gravity, but it must find a way around. Briefly floats around, attempting to move down past it. But the rod is there first, so the slug cat launches itself sideways away.
was able to avoid the rot for now. Climbing onto a pole before moving further up forwards. It briefly floats away into an empty expanse, but it's able to catch itself. But the rot heard its movements, and it's quickly in pursuit. Luckily, the slug cat's able to get away, and move into the next room. It continues forward, thinking it is safe. Moves with a slowness to it. More of the rot. The slow cat must be very careful right now. One wrong move, and it will be dead. The rod slowly moves past, seems unable to hear the slug cat moving, and so it crawls into a nearby corner, giving the slug cat a very nice opportunity to slip past. Yet the slug cat struggles in the low gravity environment for getting its bearings and slipping past. Luckily, it seems like the rock is not following it, so it might be able to escape. It throws a rock for momentum and moves into the next room. Here, it is swarmed by a group of neuron flies. Neuron flies are very small processing units, not nearly a fraction of the full processing power of five pebbles, but it still provides a small part. It's quite beautiful, but the slow cat moves on. Strange tendrils reach out of almost every corner. Though it may seem normal, these are the telling signs of a rot infestation. The slow cat continues to move through the exterior interior of Five Pebbles. It floats about helplessly for now, before noting more, noticing more of the rock. It quickly heads in the opposite direction in an attempt to get away. able to throw a spear to gain itself some upward momentum, but it's not enough. Slowcat quickly reaches into another pole, with the rod hot on its tail after hearing the spear. But it's able to find shelter, and it quickly enters. Safe.
we return to the slow cab, continuing its journey throughout Five Pebbles' interior. It's now attempting to find its way into a tunnel so that it can move forward. The Slow Cat only really has two proper means of traversal here, either by climbing along poles or climbing along the walls, which is the latter of which is much less reliable. Slow Cat throws a rock to change its speed. Uh, but it's unable to climb on the floor. Now must crawl alongside the edge of this in order to reach it. Slowly begins to move and is able to grab it. Now reaches another long climb. A strange blue glow is ahead of him. For the slug cat is approaching the recursive transform array. Slugcat briefly gains its bearings before moving forwards. This is the recursive transformer. This section of five pebbles is dotted with several high voltage flux conductors. One wrong move, and the slug hat could very easily be electrocuted. It almost goes flying into the transformers, but it's able to stay on the roof and escape. Crawling along the floor, the slug hat the tech moves into the next room. Wait, No, it seems that the slow cat, instead of going for this path ahead, is making the risky jump in between the two transformers in order to make it up. It reaches another climb. This one far more dangerous, but it's able to manage, and so it makes it into another shelter, where it will rest for now. Return to the slug cat, continuing its journey throughout the recursive transform array. As it moves forward, the flux condensers seem to short circuit. Five Pebbles isn't in good condition right now, it seems. And the slow cat is floating helplessly again, attempting to find some spot to catch his bearings. Three peculiar eye stalls confront it. This is an inspector. 
They watch over the neuron flies here. Since the slug cat doesn't seem to be harming them, it's content to leave it alone. And so the slug cat moves onwards. It's now found itself in another large dam. cannot orient itself properly right now, so it must only hope that there is nothing in its way. And there isn't. The slug hat arrives at another pipe that it can crawl through. It has now found itself at a large square structure. It's quite strange, but this does seem to be the central processing unit of five patterns. It's quite uh, beautiful, I guess. It comes across another inspector before moving onwards. It's another large dam. The slug cat makes its way through and falls away. Slughead makes its way past several more condensers before moving into the next room. The strange blue glow is now slowly being replaced with a sterile white. The slug cat is now entering Five Pebbles' memory conflux. Uh, as the name suggests, this is where Five Pebbles' memories are stored. Movement might be challenging ahead, as there is very little to hold on to here. But the slug cat continues on. Arriving in the memory conflux. Strange patterns dot the center of the room, but the slug cat just pushes them aside. The cat is once again stuck for now, grasping about for any place where it can hold on to. And it finds it, retracing its steps and going down a different pipe. continues to push forward, briefly reflecting off of a wall before moving into the next room. This room is significantly larger than the others, and the slow cat 
seems to have gotten a boost from this inspector. And it seems that the slow cat is now starting to approach the general systems bus. It will be the well, it will be the most important part of this documentary because perhaps we will meet Five Pebbles himself here. The slow cat floats about a little bit more. And hold on, there's something's wrong. Disturb me. You have ruined everything. Please. I almost had it. I will never forget this. Thank you. 
stuck in a cycle, a repeating pattern. You want to lay out. Know that this does not make you special. Every living thing shares that same frustration. From the microbes in the processing strata, to me, who am, if you excuse me, godlike in comparison. The good news first. In a way, I am what you are searching for. Me and my kind have, as our purpose, to solve that very oscillating claustrophobia in the chests of you and countless others. A strange charity. You, the unknowing recipient, I, the reluctant gift. The noble benefactors? Gone. The bad news is that no definitive solution has been found. And every moment the equipment erodes to a new state of decay. I can't help you collectively or individually. I can't even help myself. For you, though, there is another way. The old path. Go to the west, past the farm arrays, and then down into the earth with the land fishers, as deep as you can reach, where the ancients built their temples and danced their silly rituals. The mark I gave you will let you through. Not that it solves anyone's problem but yours.
you can feel your presence here, the creature. Your attunement has become much closer to ours. The mark you received is an unimaginable gift. The struggles, the cycles, they can all fade like a morning mist beneath the glory of the sun. We found a way. <laughs>